We all love our MCs. We love MCs and protagonists who fight for justice and go against the forces of evil. However, we also always have one question that goes in the back of our minds. What if they were evil? What if they embraced the dark side? And instead of becoming protectors, they became destroyers. This story is about one such occurrence. Yeehaw soldiers, it's your boy the anime stage coming to you with another video, and this is what if Deku was a villain part 1. So as a way to freshen up my MHA what ifs, I'm going to be making this series. You kind of go crazy over time with giving Deku random powers, I guess. I also know that this series has been done a lot, but I will just say this will be very different from what you expect, and will probably contain some of my best voice acting work ever, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, let's get into this video, but before I do, watch my community tab like a hawk, donate to my Patreon, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, at MSH4, Instagram, anime underscore stage 4, and join my Discord server, all of which are in the description. I will give you a reason to follow slash join the latter 4 at the end of the video, so watch until the end. In terms of videos coming up, Pokemon, The Divine Quest Chapter 3, and some other stuff that I got saved for later. And finally, if you have any fanfics you think I should read for my channel, be it Naruto, MHA, DBZ, or something else, comment down both the name of the fanfic and leave a link to it so I can read it. Since this is a new series, we can jump right into this, so without further ado, let's get right into the story. In a world full of heroes, there is always going to be a force that opposes them. These people are known as villains. It is only natural for a force of good to always face a force of evil, as the universe always needs a balance of the two forces. However, what happens if that balance shifts because of the society that's supposed to be filled with these forces of good? What if that force of good creates forces of evil because they are rejected by that force of good? And what happens when someone in another universe destined to become the greatest hero becomes the greatest villain? Join me as you hear the tale of Izuku Midoriya, who once wanted to become a hero, became the villain that had the power to bring hero society to its knees. It all started one day that would change Izuku's life forever. You are quirkless. These were words that Izuku thought would reign through his head for the rest of his life. Words that made Izuku wonder if he could even become a hero. A quote comes to mind from another universe with our young Izuku. Not all men are created equal. In a society full of heroes that had powerful quirks, that was the truth. Heck, if you didn't have a quirk in general, you might as well kiss all your hopes and dreams goodbye. Get ready for that fast food job for the rest of your life because that is all you'll ever be. Quick note, I ain't trying to insult fast food workers, but we all know it isn't the most desirable job in the world, especially with how demonic customers can be towards them. But who said those words to Izuku? Well, it was a doctor who told him he was quirkless. He diagnosed him as such, and because of this, Izuku's dreams of becoming a hero were virtually finished. But that wasn't even the beginning of his hell. Izuku would get relentlessly bullied by his now former childhood friend, Bakugo, because despite Izuku being quirkless, he still wanted to hold on to his dream of becoming a hero. Bakugo wanted to make sure he could stomp those dreams into the ground and make sure Izuku fully embraced his destiny of becoming a fast food worker for the rest of his life. What a great friend! Bakugo and his lackeys made sure to punish Izuku day in and day out, even calling him the name Deku, which Bakugo said himself meant useless. And that's all Izuku would ever be, useless. Other people from Izuku's class joined in on bullying him, as they feel the need to pick on him as well because he is quirkless. Even some of the teachers joined in on this. Why not do it? He's the only one who's quirkless. At least we all have our quirks, they probably think to themselves. Why did I say think? Because Izuku is the one who believes this. They are bullying him, and they must have the same reasons to bully him like Bakugo. All you need is to be quirkless and your life will be made a living hell. That is the norm for this society. And that is the norm for someone like Izuku. Not just because he is quirkless, but because he still 
holds on to those same foolish dreams. And on this day, it is no different. Getting bullied for being quirkless, being told his dreams will never come true, people laughing at him. It's the usual. But today, Deku is more bothered by it than normal. So today, he just goes to his room and decides to cry. His dad is here today, and as much as he would like to talk to him, he just can't today, and just wants to hide from it all, and just cry to himself. Why was he born quirkless? Why was he born quirkless when he wanted to become a hero? Why did the universe do this to him? And what can he do to fix it? What can he do to escape from this hell? Izuku just sobs over and over, trying to think of a way out of this hell, but can't think of it. So all he can do is continue to cry. He hears a knock on his door, and it is from his father. He asks, can I come in? Izuku then says, um, sure dad. His father enters, and he has black hair. And this reflects on Izuku, who has a mix of green and black hair. He says, Izuku. Were you crying? Izuku says, No. His father then gets serious and says, Don't lie to me, Izuku. Tell me the truth. Izuku then says, All right, I was crying. His father asks, Why were you crying? Izuku then says, I was crying about life. His father asks, What has happened in your life to make you cry? Izuku sighs and decides to tell his father what is happening. Izuku says, I get bullied every day because I am quirkless. People tell me my dreams will never be reached, that I should give up, and that I will never be anything but some fast food worker or some cashier or something. And it hurts. It hurts so much. I don't know if I can take it anymore, Dad. I just don't know. Izuku's father looks at his son as Izuku looks down and is crying. If he wasn't crying, he would have seen something form on his father's face. A sinister smile. His father asks, and what do you want to do to those people? Izuku looks up at his father and asks, what do you mean? His father responds with, what do you want to do to the people who want to make your life a living hell? Izuku ponders for a second until he says, I always try to keep these emotions to myself, but every day after I get bullied, I think to myself how badly I want to hurt those people. I think about it every waking day and night. I have dreams about hurting them so badly. Their screams, the only sound they can make is they hurt them more and more. Yes, that's what I want the most, to hear them scream. I want to one day make them scream in pain and agony. Then maybe they will understand my pain. Maybe then they'll regret what they did to me. Izuku's father grins evilly and asks, how badly do you want to act on those emotions? Izuku thinks for a bit and says, I know I probably shouldn't say this, but really badly. I want to hear their screams. Izuku's father smiles and says, Come with me so I can help you one day achieve that dream. Izuku nods and Izuku's father will say, Goodbye, Inko. I'm going to take little Izuku out to a restaurant to cheer him up. Inko smiles and says, Okay, thanks, honey. Izuku's father takes Izuku to his favorite place to eat. KFC. By the way, second note, I am not joking about that. KFC in Japan has absolutely exploded. I don't know what they're doing over there differently, but I know it is definitely better than whatever garbage the KFC over the United States has become. Anyways, as Izuku and his father get their meals, Izuku's father says, I'm going to tell you something, but you need to promise to stay quiet about it. Izuku nods, and then his dad says, The truth of the matter is, you were given the diagnosis of being quirkless. However, the truth is that you are not. Izuku's eyes line up and he says, very loudly, Really? His father then says, Shh, I forgot to mention this, but also, keep your voice down, as I am telling you all this. Izuku nods, and his father continues, the doctor did give you a quirkless diagnosis, but he actually works for me. I told him to diagnose you as quirkless. Izuku gets a bit angry as he starts realizing his own father is the one responsible for his hell. 
he says, Why? Why would you do that? Izuku's father then says, To give you a reality of what this society is like. What happened after you were diagnosed as quirkless? Izuku thinks for a bit and realizes what his father is trying to tell him. His father then says, You are starting to get it, huh? You were treated differently because you were quirkless. Your dreams of becoming a hero were spat upon, and you are in the hell you are in now, all because you were deemed quirkless. It is easy to blame me for telling the doctor to diagnose you as quirkless, but what about the people who create your hell for being quirkless? Why must you be treated differently because you are quirkless? Why must you be put in your current hell all because you are quirkless? Isuku thinks for a bit and says, I shouldn't be, but I was. I want to blame you for this, but I was put in this hell by people who saw me as in fear because I didn't have a quirk. I guess I hate everyone because of this. I hate you. I hate my classmates. I hate my teachers. I hate everything. Izuku's father nods and says, Good. Let the hatred and anger you have flow through you. Let it consume you. The truth is, is that you are angry at society. You will understand more and more as you get older, but your society at this moment in time is the reason for your suffering. It is the main reason why you went through this hell. Now, answer me this question, Izuku. Are you gonna just accept this fact and continue on with your life? Or are you gonna do something about it? Izuku thinks for a bit and says, I want to do something about it. Izuku's father smiles evilly and says, Then I will help you with that, starting tomorrow. Izuku nods and says thank you to his father, and the next day will be very eventful for Izuku. Izuku will be taken by his father to the hospital where he was diagnosed as quirkless. Izuku wonders why he is being taken here, and will then meet the doctor who diagnosed him as quirkless. Izuku's father says, Hello, Dr. Garaki. Dr. Garaki says, Well, well, well. If it isn't the powerful mind crusher, here with his son. Izuku looks at his father very confused. Mind crusher? Isuku thinks to himself. Mind Crusher then says, It's been a while. Thank you for covering up my son's actual quirk. Dr. Garaki says, Why, of course. We wouldn't want anyone to be on high alert of Mind Crusher having a son. Isuku asks, What is going on? Mind Crusher says, You see, you have dreams of becoming a hero, young Isuku. It's only natural growing up in a hero society. However, you are not necessarily the son of a good man. In fact, you are the son of a very powerful ally of a very powerful villain. Izuku's eyes widen a bit and he says, Villain? But I don't want to be a villain! Mind Crusher looks to the doctor and then nods, and Dr. Garaki decides to sit back and watch the show. Mind Crusher says to his son, But why be a hero in a society that will reject you for being quirkless? Why be a hero when in order to combat the hell that society has inflicted on you, you should become what society will see you as, a villain? Izuku ponders for a bit and then says, But wouldn't being a villain mean I will kill people? Mind Crusher then says, Yes, but that's just the price that needs to be paid in order to change your society. Would you rather keep your society the way it is when it has given you your own personal hell? Or would you rather become a villain and bring your society to its knees, and make it pay for what it has done to you? Isuku still is unsure of what to do, but the prospect of becoming a villain is starting to entice him. Mind Crusher then says, Isuku, because you were diagnosed as quirkless, you are seen as trash in society, and your dreams of becoming a hero are not worth chasing. Even your own mother thinks so. Isuku then says, No, she doesn't. She believes in my dreams. Mind Crusher then says, Does she really? Isuku then realizes that she hasn't really said anything about his dreams. She might be thinking the same thing as everyone else. His dreams are absolutely worthless. 
but there's no way she actually thinks that, right? She'll support his dream, right? Mind Crusher says, you don't believe me. Ask her for yourself. She doesn't know about my true identity or any of this, so she is the perfect person to give you an honest answer, since she's your mother. If she tells you your dreams aren't worth chasing, then you will know I'm right, and maybe you will realize the path of the villain ain't so bad after all. However, if she does support your dream of becoming a hero, you can continue your path to wanting to become a hero. Deal? Izuku decides to take the deal, and will later be watching another video of All Might saving people. He wonders if his father will be right, but there's no way he will be right, right? Izuku looks to his mother and asks her, Do you think I can be like All Might? Do you think I can become a hero even without a quirk? Inko looks down a bit, and then she does something that Izuku does not want to see. She starts to cry. And then she says the words that will start Izuku's path to the darkness. I'm sorry, Izuku. She then hugs her son, trying to comfort him. This tells Izuku everything. Even his own mom doesn't believe in him. She thinks the same things as Bakugo, his classmates, and his teachers. He cannot become a hero. She's not as hateful as everyone else, but she too thinks his dreams are pointless like everyone else. Mind Crusher was right, and that's when he realizes that everyone must pay. Bakugo must pay. His classmates must pay. His teachers must pay. His own mother must pay. But most of all, this here society must pay. If society can cause Izuku to go for a living hell, and even cause his own mother to not believe in his hopes and dreams, then this here society must fall. It must pay for what it has done to him, and he will make sure that here society one day falls to its knees and turns to ash. They will pay, Izuku says to himself. They will all pay! Izuku will go to the doctor's office with his father the next day, and on the way he says, You were right, Dad. She didn't believe in me. My own mother didn't believe in my dream. Mind Crusher smiles evilly. He then says, I told you. Now, what do you want to do about it? Izuku says, I want to become a villain and one day bring society down to its knees. Everyone and everything shall fall to me and I will make sure of it. Mind Crusher smiles and says, Good, because now is a good time to tell you about your quirk though Dr. Gauraki has the most information on it. Izuku nods and then will head into the doctor's office. Dr. Gauraki says to Mind Crusher, Is he ready? Mind Crusher then says, Yes, yes he is. Gauraki says, All right, young Izuku, I think it's time I tell you about your quirk. Izuku nods and Gauraki says, Well, you have a very powerful quirk. You seem to have a more advanced quirk than your father. Izuku then says, what is my father's quirk? Garaki says, well, your father has a mind quirk, where he has the ability to either control or destroy anyone's mind, literally. It's why he has become a villain that has a very high reward on him, because he can kill anyone with his quirk, except those who are stronger than him. Over time, as he has aged, he has gotten weaker, and he is in need of a successor to restart his reign of terror. That is you, with your quirk. Izuku then says, what does it do? Garaki says, it serves the same purpose as your dad's quirk, but because of your mother's telekinesis quirk, it has become something even more powerful. Not only can you crush anyone's mind and control them, but you can do a lot more than he ever could. You can create your own field around you and fly. You can float objects, create a field around you to protect yourself, and so much more. You will definitely be stronger than your father, no doubt about it. Izuku is pretty happy to hear this, and then Mind Crusher says, And both me and Gauraki will be making sure you train yourself to the point you can be the strongest you can be. Izuku nods, and Mind Crusher will say, Once you get to that point, you will become strong enough to start your revenge. 
And once you start your revenge, no one will be able to stop you. Not even All Might. Izuku's eyes widen, and he knows he cannot wait to get started on this training. And for the next decade, up until he reaches 14, he will train to become as strong as possible. He will be hiding his quirk from everyone, including his own mother, because his father told him to. And he is also told to take note of his treatment as he gets older. He will realize that his treatment does not change at all, even as he gets older. He sees that even as he gets older, the treatment is still harsh. Izuku cannot wait until the day he can start his reign of terror. In a couple of days till the final day of middle school, his training is complete. There is only one thing he has left to do. Kill someone. And Izuku starts with some small fry. He is following one of his classmates named Onoki, and he is waiting for the opportunity to kill him. He's wearing a hood, making sure he is not recognized. Onoki goes into an alley, an alley he routinely uses to get home. Onoki then realizes someone is following him, and looks at this hooded person. He says, Who are you? Izuku doesn't say anything and just lifts his hand. Onoki then starts to feel pain in his head. He then drops to his knees and he will start screaming. Izuku then says, Scream. Scream more for me. Onoki begs for him to stop, but he doesn't stop. Izuku then eventually decides to end it, and then closes his hand. Onoki's mind is crushed, and Onoki drops dead, blood pouring out of his ears. Izuku contemplates his choices in life. Was this really worth it? Was it really worth killing this kid? Yes. Yes it was. He needed to pay for making his life a living hell just like everyone else, and he will only be the beginning. Izuku walks to the doctor's office and will tell Garaki that he has done it. Dr. Garaki smiles and says, Good job, your path to being a villain has been forged. I cannot wait to see how powerful you will be in the near future. Izuku nods and will then head back home. Izuku at around the final day of middle school will look at his classmates for the last time. His classmates were shocked that Onoki got killed, and they were also shocked that the murder has not been found yet. Bakugo boasted about one day catching the villain who did this to Onoki, and then he talked about things such as one day being the best hero and getting into UA. In another universe, Izuku would have wanted to go to UA High, but in this universe, he can't go. Not with the path he is about to follow. As Izuku is about to leave, Bakugo says, What's the matter, Deku? Don't you want to go to UA? Deku just ignores him, and as much as he wants to kill Bakugo, he will have his turn. He wants Bakugo to be the last person he kills. It will be a great way to cap off his accomplishments as a villain. As society is collapsing and Bakugo can't stop him, Izuku just walks up to Bakugo and gives him the most torture he will ever give someone with his quirk, and then end him. So, he will keep him alive for now. Bakugo then says, I am talking to you, nerd. Answer me! Isuku says, Don't talk to me! In a dark voice, and Bakugo is taken aback and backs off. Isuku then leaves, and Bakugo wonders to himself, What's his problem? Deku will take the path he normally takes to get home. He then encounters a villain that he is able to dodge right away, and then gives the villain a glare. The villain in question, a sludge villain, can feel the terrifying aura coming off of Deku, and he decides not to mess with him, and goes away. All Might then appears, and he asks him if he has seen a sludge villain. Izuku tells him he went that way, and All Might will go in the direction of the sludge villain. Izuku thinks himself as All Might flies away, All Might, the so-called symbol of peace. Soon, all of what you stand for, and the society you have built up will fall to me. Izuku then goes home and will have dinner with his mother. They sit down together and Inko asks, So, Izuku, what are you going to do? Izuku asks, What do you mean, Mom? Inko says, Are you going to try to get into UA? Izuku shakes his head and says, I don't think so. It's like they all say, I can't become a hero without a quirk, so why should I even try? Inko nods sadly and says, I'm so sorry, Izuku. 
I know how much you wanted to become a hero, but what you are saying is the truth. You can't become a hero without a quirk. Izuku nods and says, I thank you for helping me realize that. Inko is confused as she doesn't know what Izuku means. Izuku says, You remember when I was like four or five and I asked you if I could become a hero without a quirk? Inko then realizes what Izuku means and she says, Look, I know it was not what you wanted to hear, and I would have wanted more than anything for you to be able to accomplish your dreams, but it's just how the world works. You either have a quirk or you don't. And if you don't, you might as well say goodbye to those dreams. Isuku then sits back in his chair and says, Good thing I have found another path in life. Enko smiles and says, You have? Izuku nods and says, You see, I have found a new path for myself, and let me just say I believe this will make me very happy. Though you might not like this path, Mom. Enko is once again confused. Izuku then says, You see... There are a couple things I do want to tell you. One, I actually do have a quirk. In fact, I have been training secretly for a long time and growing more and more powerful with it. Inko smiles and says, That's great! That means you can become a- Let me finish, Izuku says. And Inko stops talking and is taken aback by the darkness that is in his voice. Izuku then says, Two, I no longer want to become a hero despite having a quirk. In fact, I'm more interested in a different path. A path of darkness. Inko then says, Path of darkness? What do you- Wait, Izuku, you can't! Izuku then says, Why not? I think it suits me better seeing as I am the son of a villain. Inko then says, What do you mean, Izuku? Your family contains no villains! None! That would be incorrect, Inko, a familiar voice says. Mind Crusher then walks into the room. Inko then says, Honey, what are you doing here? Mind Crusher then says, I am only here to witness the rise of my son as a villain. Inko then realizes what is going on. She snaps and says, You were a villain the whole time? Mind Crusher nods and says, Yes. And for the past decade or so, I have been helping our son develop into the best villain he can be. Now, I will give you a choice to join us in our quest for the destruction of this society. But if you refuse, there will be consequences. Inko snaps back at him and says, I will never join you, you monster! My crusher sighs and says, uh, I went from loving husband to monster. Oh well, I guess you have made your choice. Isuku, give her the consequence. Enko then looks at her son, who is looking at her with a dark look on his face. Enko looks at her son, terrified of what's to come. She pleads, No! Please! Izuku! Please don't do this! But her pleas are unheard, as Izuku lifts up his hand. Enko then screams, and screams, and screams, as the pain in her head is unbearable. Izuku then closes his hand, and Inko drops to the floor, limp, blood starting to pour from her ears. Izuku has killed Inko. Mind Crusher grins evilly and says, Good job, Izuku. You have now taken a major step in your path to destroy Hero Society. Izuku then says, Shame Mom had to die, but she opposed the path I was about to take, and with her alive, it would make things extremely difficult to kickstart my plans. But her death won't be in vain. No, she is just one step forward to the fall of Hero Society. And I hope. Izuku then makes a very sinister grin on his face and says, I hope in the future I can hear more screams. Mind Crusher just smiles evilly, proud of what his son has become. Izuku has taken a major step in his path to the darkness. He will start making plans for the downfall of Hero Society, and there are very few people who can stop him. Will Izuku complete his plan of destruction and hear more screams along the way? Find out as this series continues. Thank you all for watching part 1 of What If Daku Was A Villain. I definitely made this extremely dark, especially with some of my voice acting and the killing of Inko, but 
It's just one step to the rise of our villain Izuku. And we will see how powerful he becomes in the future and if he will destroy Hero Society. Should be fun to watch, so stay tuned. Also, let me know what you thought of my first series where I had the main protagonist of a series tap into their dark side. I eagerly await your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned for Pokemon The Divine Quest Chapter 3, as well as some other videos that I have playing in my back pocket, so stay tuned for those. And if you want me to, again, read some Naruto, MHA, or DVC fanfics, or anything else, again, comment the name of the fanfic below, and link to where I can read it in the comments. So again, do all that, and you should be good. Watch my community tab like a hawk, that is important. And finally, follow me on Twitter at MSH4 for you know where you get off my videos as well as to see some funny stuff over there. And also interact with me more because I am the most active on Twitter, Instagram for memes, and just that memes, but still follow me over there. My handle is AMA underscore stage four. And finally, join me as Corsair for the ability to interact with me directly because I am active over on Discord as well. As well as having another way to get notified of my videos. And you also have some other fun stuff in between, so there's the ability to see my thumbnails early and also some other stuff in between. So again, join my Discord server. So again, follow me on Twitter and Instagram and join my Discord server. Shout out to my patrons, their names are on the screen, and my Fidora patron anguish. If you want to support me further and get rewards so to shouts like these, go to my Patreon, which is linked in the description. I made changes to the $5 tier because I was having trouble giving you guys in the $5 tier rewards, but that should be fixed in the near future with these new rewards that I think are a bit more manageable. So yeah, if you again want to support me further on Patreon and get the $5 tier and some other stuff, again, go to my Patreon, which is again linked in the description. Finally, again, if you want to see my podcast over on Twitch, go follow me over there. That is linked in the description. We're getting closer to 43k and eventually 50k, so let's get there. And that is all I have to say. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, and share the video. This has been your boy, the Anime Sage. Sign out. Peace. Your ha. Semi Shea closes out. Bye bye. Peace. Hi, this is Stephanie Shea, voice actress for Sailor Moon, Hinata, Orihime, and you are watching Anime Sage. <laughs>